Hey y'all, it's Billy Hell in the, 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 the Hey y'all, it's Billy Hell in the Billy Hell Guitar Room. And today I want to talk about some Breedlove guitars. You know, I did a video on Breedlove about a 12 string I bought. And I like the way it looked, I like the way it played, but I wasn't impressed with how loud acoustically it was. And since then, I've gone full down the rabbit hole during the pandemic of acoustic electronics. And I, I've completely moved off of what's coming out of the sound hole and more into what's coming out of the uh, guitar jack. So during the pandemic, I quit going to uh, work out and lifting weights, and I bought myself a Gorilla Bowl. And in the process, I janked up my right shoulder. And usually, I play... And there will be a video coming out on this. I've been reluctant to talk about uh, how much I'm in love with this Yari guitar that I accidentally found at Guitar Center and stole... I really uh, barely paid any money for it. And um, to me, this is like a high-end Martin and just such a sweetheart. And it came with a rare earth uh, fishman. It's very barky and it's awesome. Now, as you can see, I can actually put my arm around it now, but after I messed my shoulder up, I could not play it. And I was like, oh, this is driving me crazy because it... I was either going to hurt myself or not play my acoustics, and I started going on the hunt for a thinner body guitar. The, I believe, and I should have a tape measure here, but I think this is 8 inches at the base of the body. And so, all of a sudden, I find out that um, Breedlove has different size body guitars. This is the concert body, and I thought this was the smallest one they made. How did I miss it? I don't know. We'll talk about that one second. This is like 4.1 inches. So this is almost half the size or, yeah, of, uh, of my big guitar. And this is a Discovery Concert. Sick to top, spruce back. And I really believe uh, at the price point, which is, I think it's 429 retail, but I think you can get them for around 378 on Reverb and places like that. But I think this is really made for beginners. Um, for me, I've owned enough high-end acoustics to know that I don't want to be taking a really expensive guitar out to the campfire where it's cold and the fire makes it hot or uh, anywhere where it's going to get beat up. I tend to just leave them at home. So now I'm in love with really great plain, low-priced acoustics. So I found this thing at Bandwagon. I bought it. Um, it was actually a used, it's stamped used in the back, which means that, and I found out the bridge was not right and uh, the nut and um, there's a company in town that takes them and fixes them and stamps them used and I got it for very little money and brought it home and was really excited not super over the top amazing um, but it definitely does a job and what I was really uh, into other than the body being smaller is this neck which I did not I guess I've never thought about it the neck on this is perfect in the hand you know it's not something that you put your hand around and have to think about it's just natural it's probably a C and then the other thing that I've started to notice when I was playing it was how the frets are closer together then on my dreadnought. So on the dread, you know, you can cowboy chord all day, but when you start to go in like uh, this thing, so that's uh, three frets here. So that's really hard to do on the dread because those frets are so far apart. And I realized, hey man, I can actually play this thing like an electric guitar, some of the licks that I've learned and, and play all the time on my SG. And I'm not saying this is an electric neck, because that's kind of off-putting to me on an acoustic. I don't want a skinny, tiny neck on an acoustic, but it's definitely tighter, smaller, and, and fast. Um, cutaway is a plus, so I really wanted a cutaway on my uh, Yari. And the 12th fret is here, so that cutaway is going to let you get up on the E. And the cutaway on acoustic like this still is a little bit limiting, but at least you can access like the A uh, if you want to do some A stuff. So I was like, this is awesome. And then I found out that they have a concertina. 
what's a concertina? I don't know. Um, this leads us to the history of the Breedlove. The uh, guys that came up with Breedlove were luthiers for Taylor Left, created the Breedlove line. And you can buy $8,000 Breedloves made in America, or you can buy these low-end uh, Chinese Breedloves. And I've never... I've never been a snob on a guitar. I've I've played. I remember the first time I ever played a high-end Gibson. It was I worked. I was doing a CMT commercial, and uh, I had Gibson make and uh, what was it? It was a four hundred, but it was like a four thousand dollar guitar, and uh, they did some inlay for the commercial for CMT, and I thought, man, I'm gonna play this four thousand you know dollar guitar, expecting it to be you know, that much better. And I remember thinking, I don't even, I wouldn't even buy this guitar. And that's when I realized cheap guitars can play great and expensive guitars can play not so great. So I don't judge a guitar by the price tag after that. This thing is a concertina. This is the uh, little brother, although I don't think sonically it's little, to the uh, Discovery Concert. The concertina body is actually slightly smaller than the concert body. And it's like 3.8 inches, which isn't significantly smaller. But I, I remember at the time going, oh, yeah, I can do this now, and it doesn't hurt. Um, same, same wood, Sitka and spruce, and the same neck. The headstock's a little different on this one. It's a square headstock. On the other one, it's more of a swoopy, rock and rolly looking thing. And I'll do, like, the headstock better, which is just an aesthetic. Um, I went to two old hippies. They bought Breed Love, and they're based out of Oregon. And there's a two old hippie shop in Nashville. And my daughter and I were desperate to go somewhere. And I said, "Let's go to the store." I know they had Breed Love guitars. I don't think I understood that they owned Breed Love. And like, if I had an issue with either of these these guitars, I could head down there, and they would take care of me. You can also custom uh, order your guitar. So I'll talk about that now. I really like this thing. And since my shoulder has gotten better, I've gone back to the dread and then come back to playing this just because of the neck and how easy it is. I also, and we'll do this in just one second, both of these come with that onboard presis and undersaddle piezo. And the, one of the reasons I think I love the Yari is it, it came with a rare earth fishman, an old one. And I went on reverb and I found another rare earth fishman. I got it for 60 bucks. That's not usually the case. And I put a Rare Earth Fishman in here, just like on the Yari. And then after much research, and I, I'll talk about this maybe in another video, um, I wired it stereo. I put a stereo jack in the end so I can plug in and just get my Fishman only, or I can put a stereo jack in there and go out to two amps or, you know, a stereo input. And um, you can get your piezo sound and your sound hole sound. And I'll show that or I'll let you listen to that in just a second. And that's another reason, though, that makes this guitar cool. It's small, plays great. Um, I'm not afraid to take it anywhere or lose it. I'm, I could lose this guitar and then go grab another one. Um, well, or get it stolen, whatever. Smashed. And then the stereo output is intriguing to me just because of the options. So I run a little HX Stomp Helix pedal. I also have, um, well, that's really the only stereo in. So I can go stereo out of this, stereo into my little HX stop, and then have one dry, have one that uh, is a little dirty. It's just cool to have all that. And this guy plays great, super comfortable, and the smaller size body really, I think, makes a difference. So that's it going through the amp. We'll do it without the amp. One of the things I liked about this is I think the action slightly higher than on the first guitar, but it, it in the room, it really has nice round, warm notes. Okay, let me catch my groove here. So all I'm doing there is showing you how high up the net you can go comfortably. And then A. A little Tyler right there. Um, so you can strum it hard. up. This 
is the stock. This is what came with it. because of the shoulder I usually play this way. This cable's a little shorter. So plugged in, man, it's right there with, uh, with the, the, the Ari Dread or anything else because these pickups are now doing all the work and the little body is now, uh, I was going to say not, not a part of the sound, but that is completely not true. What I'm finding is my acoustics Definitely sound different than if I, and I keep trying to do this. It's not, I don't think it's on camera. It is, it's right over there. It's a Telecaster that I've got piezos in and all kinds of stuff trying to get an acoustic sound like my, one of these guitars to come out of that uh, Tele. And I personally cannot make it happen, even with IRs. That's why I came back to this. All right, we'll turn down the uh, under saddle and turn up the sound hole pickup. Once again, a rare earth. Both of these have built-in preamps. You know, there's the preamp in the side. The rare earth has a preamp. So we're running straight into a Fishman loud box with two different channels. And so that uh, magnetic gives you a totally different tone. I think a warmer. get a little more acoustic tone also it's going to make you feedback if you're playing with somebody on a stage or something so, but the great part is you can turn it off Depends on the guitar, maybe on the strings. So, uh, not to make this too long for you, the Breed Love is a really cool option. Hey, wait, there's one more thing I need to say. Let's say that you fall in love with this concertina or the concert or whatever, and uh, you start at one of these low end guitars with Sitka, and then you're like, I really like this so much, I'd like to move up. This is something I don't think I can do with another maker. Um, where if I was in love with this low end guitar, you could then go into like an Oregon built American guitar. Be sure to play them because the cheap ones can play sometimes. And I already said this, but I'm talking about breed love because I was pr playing them on the wall at two hippies and there were $2,000 guitars that I didn't think sounded as good as this little guitar. And, um, but you can get yourself a better guitar. You can get yourself a $6,000 version of this guitar, which is cool. Because maybe I love this guitar, and five years from now, I'm like, I want a, I want a really cool version of this. <coughs> Squeeze me. Uh, the other thing is, is you can uh, do it online. You can do it in like a, at their shop in Oregon or at a Two Hippies store in Nashville. You can create your own custom version. So they'll tell you the tops and sides and, and uh, bindings and all the stuff that you can pick from. And then you could design your own guitar. I did not get a price on that. I meant to ask. Maybe I didn't on purpose, but so the fact that it's got this great neck, it's super playable, uh, low entry fee, and then if you want to, you can move up in scale of how awesome your guitar is, looks, cost. Uh, that's just not really something available. <laughs> i 
it's dry, then it's a little bit of delay, and then the third one is just crazy reverb delay, and um, it's so much fun, and such a low entry price, so I'm just saying, I got a breed love thing going now, and I wanted to share it. Um, more videos are coming up that I just felt like I really had to do and have not done them, and so look forward to that. I appreciate y'all. Go to BillHale.com. That'll take you to all my YouTube videos. Hit subscribe and like and motivate me to uh, do more videos, and go check out the breed loves. Bye, y'all.